The country of Niger, Africa is getting closer and closer to an all-out conflict with many African states and other many parties involved. And just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, Niger, Africa decides to do this. Charge the president of Niger, Africa, Mohamed Bazoum, with treason. And the implications of this, to be charged with treason means capital punishment. And if you don't know what capital punishment means, <laughs> En tout état de cause, le gouvernement nigérien a réuni à ce jour les éléments nécessaires de preuve pour poursuivre devant les instances nationales et internationales compétentes le président Duchu et ses complices locaux et étrangers pour haute trahison et atteinte à la sûreté intérieure et extérieure du Niger. Okay, so this is a little complicated. Let me try to simplify this for you the best way I can. The president of Niger has been communicating with other countries outside of his domain. So countries like Nigeria, uh, the United States, with France, anyone he could talk to, anyone who could try and sway the decision within his own country and get him back in power, he was talking to them. So the new heads of state in Niger, um, who are the military of Niger, they are saying, look, this is treason. You are talking to other entities. You're trying to disrupt what's happening within us because of you. We have economic sanctions. We have an uprise and violence. It's all your fault, thus treason. Now, of course, there's a Wikipedia page about capital punishment in Niger, but I'm just letting you guys know right now, I did cross-reference and find some other um, legal actions that involve treason and capital punishment within Niger. I just chose to show you guys this article because it's easier to display. So capital punishment is a legal penalty in Niger. So capital punishment, it can happen. You can't just go around taking people out. It's within their legal jurisdiction. It's within their legal constitution. Despite its legality, its last known execution was carried out in 1976 for treason. And despite what the media loves to portray all of Africa as, as an entire violent group of nations who just take their own people out, this is not necessarily true for the country of Niger. They're actually historically rather peaceful when it comes to taking care of their own citizens and punishment and trying to be as fair as possible. Because again, the last person to be taken out for treason was back in 1976. And when I say taken out, I mean literally taken out. African bloc ECOWAS has directed the activation of a standby force to restore democracy in Niger following the coup. The leaders have concluded their emergency meeting in Abuja. They have condemned the detention of President Mohamed Bazoum and say the regional bloc will enforce strict travel restrictions to Niger and freeze assets of individuals in the way of a return to a civilian government. Okay, so I'm sure many of you are aware, um, ECOWAS has said they are prepared to assemble this military that's ready to march on Niger and restore order. The only issue is, and even they are admitting, where is this military coming from? Who's going to be organizing this whole thing? Who's going to be commanding the military? Um, is ECOWAS even prepared to attack and invade Niger? This is not a simple task to go into another country. Um, and other people speak different languages. You have different battle orders. You have different, uh, you know, tank commanders might do something different from another tank commander. How is ECOWAS actually going to go into a country who just underwent a coup? There's a lot of people saying this is sort of a bluff. Even Niger is saying ECOWAS 100% is not going to be marching on our territories. Okay, for anyone who's a little late to the party, there is a collection of African nations called ECOWAS. And these African nations have essentially all banded together and have special treaties and help each other with economic plans, military strategies, and Niger happens to be smack dab in the middle of all of them. You have countries like Mali, Nigeria, etc., who are within these um, group of nations. Now, the issue is this. These group of nations, ECOWAS, have all agreed that they will not fall apart to a coup. You need to promise no no more coups. And what happens? Niger falls to a coup. The issue is if one of these countries start to fall apart economically or they start to fall apart due to other um, militant groups trying to cause some chaos within your country, the other countries of ECOWAS, these collective of African nations, they start to fall apart too and they start to become destabilized. Thus, that is why ECOWAS is saying we will send in our militaries to come help you, Niger. But the issue is, since Niger is being upheld by a coup and the leader of Niger now is the military of Niger, uh, there's not a lot of cooperation here. In fact, people are saying, Niger is saying, stay out of our country, we don't want any help. 
Now, as far as where are all these military troops going to come from who are going to intervene within Niger, the biggest implication is going to be Nigeria, considering they actually have a rather strong, powerful military, they are well-equipped, they have good technology, and they meet good standards and practices for a professional military. Now, not the entire ECOWAS force is going to be coming from Nigeria, but since Nigeria is a border nation and they are right there, they are almost sort of taking the charge within their implications of they are ready for conflict. They've been very vocal about saying, look, you guys have been causing us a lot of issues already being a border state. You have militant groups coming into our country. We're going to settle the score once and for all, we're going to go into Niger and help restore your president, Mr. Mohammed. Now, if you're a nerd like me who loves statistics, or you're not a nerd who loves statistics, again, I'm going to try to make this as entertaining and easy to understand as possible. Um, here is a chart actually comparing Niger to Nigeria. Again, these are not the same countries. Don't get that twisted. On the left side are the Niger stats. On the right side are the Nigerian stats. And the most important stat, honestly, is this one right here where my cursor is. When you look at the difference between how many troops one country has to the other, it's quite staggering. We'll start on the left side, again, Niger. Um, information varies, approximately 10,000 active troops, estimated 6,000 army, 200 air force, and 4,000 gendarmerie. I don't know exactly what that is, but 3,000 National Guard troops. Now, one thing to remember about Niger, they do have conscription, so they can automatically instate military forces to go and help them and support the military effort. Now, when you go over to the right side, which is Nigeria, the size estimates for the Nigerian armed forces, approximately 135,000 active personnel. 135 active personnel versus 10,000. That's already massively different. Now, again, these are not all infantry and combat troops, but nonetheless, that's a lot. Um, 100,000 Army, 20,000 Navy slash Coast Guard, 15,000 Air Force, and 80,000 Security and Civil Defense Corps. Now, Nigeria actually has... Um, a volunteer force, which is um, a good thing. Countries who typically have all volunteer forces, morale is usually higher because you chose to be there. Um, they are a paid professional military. When you look at a conscript military, we'll just use Russia as an example, morale is known to be lower, the pay is lower, and you're oftentimes put in situations you definitely don't want to be in, especially if you're the lowest man on the totem pole. You're about to either be on the front line or you're going to be digging trenches in a position that's not even guarded. Russia is warning a regional bloc of African countries not to take military action in the West African country. The Economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS, activated a military force for possible use in the country on Thursday. CBC's Dominic Valaitis is following this story and joins us now from London. So, Dominic, tell us more about Russia's warning. Well, although Russia doesn't formally back the coup, it has issued uh, this warning, a warning about these uh, this potential plans for a military intervention. That's right. You also have Russia in the mix of things who all of a sudden really seem to care. Russia has been on this campaign to support African nations. Um, Burkina Faso called Russia a brother to the Africans. Like they've gone through the same struggle. We we pretty much have the same history. Russia has been paying off the debts of African nations. They've been giving away free food, stuff like that. So for Russia to say we don't want destabilization, it's almost a weird move considering Russia, Wagner Group, who is the mercenary group tied to Russia, essentially destabilized Mali to gain power within Mali. And that is the Russian move to destabilize a country, go in there and pretend like we are best friends. Now, here is where things get a little more complicated because there are elements within Niger who actually do support Russia coming into Niger. Check this clip out. Support for Russia has been growing in West Africa. Tailors in Niger have rushed to make Russian flags as their demand grew since President Mohamed Bazoum was ousted late last month. Over the past few days, I've been selling fabrics in the colors of Russia. Traders and people from the city are buying these fabrics. I can't estimate how much fabric has been sold lately, but when a product is easy to buy, it becomes difficult to stock very early on. 
So we definitely cannot dismiss the fact that there is possibly Russian influence within Niger and the people of Niger. The fact that you are worrying about buying flags in one of the poorest countries in the world when your country is falling apart and you say, you know what, let's buy a Russian flag. There's obviously some implications here. I'm not going to go ahead and throw this all out there and be like, Russia um, has staged a coup. This is all them. Look, they're buying these Russian flags. But nonetheless, there are Russian flags being bought straight from the source, a tailor who makes things from scratch. Why all of a sudden is he making Russian flags for the people of Niger, Africa? I went to the demonstrations and I was with a Russian flag. I like Russia because most African countries are with the Russians. I also think that they have a solution. <laughs> Similar outpourings of pro-Russian sentiments have been noted in other West African countries and have accompanied a rise in anti-French sentiment. Mali's junta has turned its back on France since it took over in 2021 and is instead cooperating with Russian mercenaries to fight a jihadist insurgency in the Sahel. Citizens in Burkina Faso also waved Russian flags during violent anti-France demonstrations that followed a coup in September 2022. If you think all of a sudden it's a coincidence that Mali and Burkina Faso are just like, France, we hate you and we love Russia, and you see um, a man on the street saying most African countries are with Russia, they have a solution. Again, if the glove fits, the glove fits. There's obviously some sort of influence happening. People are seeing on the news in Africa that you know what, maybe Russia does have a solution and maybe we should work with Russia. Now, I'm here to say when you do look at these implications, it's probably not going to be the best thing, but Russia is doing whatever it takes to try and become allies with someone, try to get some ties somewhere and gain some sort of strategic power on the other countries who can't stand Russia, the United States, all of Europe, etc. And so Russia, again, has sort of implied they do want to go into Africa, form relations, and essentially almost form a new Soviet Union within Africa. Again, this is a very slow process, but it's been working. It's been happening within Mali, Burkina Faso. And when you do start to see people wave African flags and you've already seen Russia has said this should not be happening, but... Uh, it's a little bit of a hip hypocritical statement because you also have Wagner Group who says, we will help you guys just in case you need the help. And Mali has said, we will intervene if any other outside entities try coming into your country. And again, as you saw from this report, Mali is backed by Wagner. Wagner is Russia. So as far as this guy right here, Mohamed Bazoum, again, he is being charged with treason. Now, does this automatically mean he's going to have capital punishment and they're going to take his head off? Not necessarily, but it is a massive implication to charge your former leader with treason because now this is being blasted all over Niger media and the people of Niger, they probably are like, what the heck is going on? I guess, yeah, treason, uh, by definition, he is communicating with outside entities without... Uh, talking to anybody who's in charge now. That's the way that the new leaders of Niger are seeing this. Hey, you went over our heads and you're talking to other people. Now we have economic sanctions. Our country is falling apart, not because of us, because of you. So we are almost at a standoff where ECOWAS is saying, look, we are ready to send in our military powers, yet we want diplomacy. We want to resolve this peacefully. But then you have the juntas, the head of Niger, who are saying, uh, well, treason. So yeah, we understand the peace. We'll talk to you guys, but we got to deal with our own problems here, which again, implies that they are not willing to talk to Muhammad. Um, they say Muhammad has been cooperating with the French. No one can stand the French anymore throughout many regions of Africa, not only Niger. And so we'll see what happens. I don't think they're going to take him out because if they take him out with capital punishment, that's going to instigate the massive instability. It's going to decredit Niger. And it's going to create this uh, power vacuum of let's see who else who can take over Niger, whether it's Russia, etc. I do think if this happens, the United States immediately needs to pull out of the country. So we're talking millions upon millions of dollars that have been invested within Niger. They're going to pull everything out. They're going to pull all assets out. And that'll be another country that has fallen while the United States is there, unfortunately. Because again, we have a vacuum of counterinsurgency that is just falling apart. You have these militant groups who are trying to take over and trying to cause chaos among actual professional militaries who are forming coups and so on. So anyway, let me know what you guys think down below. Leave your comments and opinions. I love to read all of them and respond to some of them. But yeah, I don't think this is great. I am hoping for peace, 
but I do not think they, uh, Niger is going to reinstate this president. It looks like they do not care about all of this humanitarian aid. They just want new leadership and potentially maybe even form a leadership with Russia.